Welcome to the Photography BB Artistry Actions tutorial for our brand new Watercolor 2021 Photoshop action. This action is compatible with Photoshop CS6 and a special version is also compatible with Photoshop CC 2021 right up to the current version and moving forward as well. So the first step is to install the action itself and also the included custom brushes file. Now, if you're not familiar with how to install brushes or actions into Photoshop, please refer to our separate video tutorial on how to install these components into Photoshop. Now, once you have installed the action and the included brushes into Photoshop, here's how we use it. So the first step is to open the actions panel here by going to window actions and that toggles open the actions panel. So we will have, once you've installed it, the Photography BB Watercolor 2021, either for Photoshop CC or for Photoshop CS6. Uh, now you can toggle this folder open by clicking the little arrow here and that reveals the contents of this action folder here. So we have three different versions of our watercolor 2021 action. The first one is a one-click watercolor version, which automatically frames the image itself. So it's going to produce sort of a watercolor frame around the outside of the image and everything inside will be painted. Everything outside of that frame will be like a simulated paper canvas. The second version is a really neat and unique one to Photoshop CC only. This one will only work with CC 2021 and forward uh, and is not backwards compatible to previous versions of Photoshop. What this one does is it's a one click uh, watercolor version as well, but it automatically will select the subject of the photo. So this typically only works well with uh, portraitures. So if you have an image of a person or of a pet or an animal, uh, the auto subject version will work wonderfully with that. It'll automatically select the subject and just paint around and inside the subject selection. So that one's really cool. And the last version that we have is a two-step version for a manual selection of your subject. So if you wanted to select certain areas of your image only and you wanted to have full control over which parts of the image get turned into a watercolor, this is the version here that you would use. Since these two above are one-click versions, they're very easy to use. You just click on whichever one you want to use and hit the play button, the action will run from start to finish all by itself. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate the manual version so that you can see how that one works. So the first step is to go with step one, select that and click the play button here. And a little dialogue will pop up that says next paint over the area of your image that you would like to retain in your watercolor. So paint on the main focus area layer. That's this one that's automatically selected. And very important, please ensure that your brush opacity and flow are both set to 100% in the top toolbar up here. And then we're going to click continue to paint the area now, and then we'll run step two once we've done that. So let's click continue. Double check that the opacity is 100%, flow is 100%. If it is not, please change those to 100% right now. The brush is automatically selected for you. And basically all you have to do is paint over the subject or any part of your image that you want turned into a watercolor. This can be a very loose selection. It doesn't have to be precise at all. So we'll do that. And then once we've made that selection area here, we're just gonna click on step two, watercolor and hit play. So this is effectively going to do what these one-click versions would do right out of the box here. So we'll go with uh, step two watercolor and hit play. Now depending on the speed and specifications of your computer, uh, this action may take several minutes to run from start to finish. So we're just going to speed that up here for the purpose of this tutorial video. Okay, beautiful. We have our completed watercolor effect here. So I'm just going to close this dialog box and get it out of the way. And we'll actually toggle the actions panel closed as well. And let's just zoom in a little bit on the image so you can see some of the detail that we have in the watercolor image here. 
Perfect. Okay. So now once the action has completed, you should be presented with a nice tidy little layer stack here of optional adjustments that you can do to the image through all of these layers. If you find that some of them are toggled open like this and it's a bit of a mess, all you have to do on a Mac is hold down command and option or on a PC, it'll be control and alt and then click on the little toggle arrow of the top layer here and that will close them all and tidy them up a little bit. So now the image is complete and this is the effect as it was intended to be uh, created, but it's always fun to play around and to experiment with our different layers and see how much further we can push things. So if you're adventurous and you want to make some custom sort of uh, modifications to this effect, this is how you'll do it with these layers here. So the first one is optional adjustments. So let's open that up and take a look at what's inside. So we have a few adjustment layers here. One of them controls the vibrance of the image. So with watercolors, typically they're a little bit more faded than this, but for digital images, they do tend to pop a little bit more on the screen if we increase the vibrance. But if you would like full control over that, you can double click on the little icon here, and then you can decide whether you want to tone down the vibrance, bring it back a little bit, or if you want to crank it up even more. So I'll leave it around there, around 20. And again, the saturation, you can control that as well. So we'll toggle that closed. Next is a contrast adjustment here. And this you'll find will bring out uh, some contrast between the sort of brush areas here or the, the watercolor sort of splatter areas or the soaking effect of the watercolor. If you click on that, double click the little icon uh, we can control the contrast by adjusting the curve. If you want the darks a little darker, you bring that down. If you want the lights a little darker, you can bring that down or you can bring it up. Uh, it's totally up to you how you would like to play with this as well. And if you find that you've uh, adjusted it the way you like, but it's a little bit too strong, toggle it closed. And this layer, you can actually reduce the opacity. So you can still have that same effect, but just mute it a little bit. Um, so yeah, just play around with this and see what's good to your liking. Now I've also included a black and white conversion layer here. The visibility is turned off. You'll see that the eyeball is not showing, but if you do click on it, that will turn this into a black and white. And if we look at the overall effect, black and white uh, watercolors can have a really cool sort of look to them and they're good for a number of different things. So we'll zoom back in here, toggle that visibility off. And actually we have one more layer here, which is the texture overlay. So if I zoom in a little bit further, we have sort of a simulated paper texture on this image and we can control that with the texture overlay. If we want to remove that completely, toggle the visibility off and you'll see everything becomes much more smooth. If you like it, but it's too strong or not strong enough, turn the visibility back on and we can adjust, oh, highlight that layer to make it active. And we can adjust the opacity of that. We can strengthen it there. That's a little bit too strong for the texture. We can dial it back, maybe around 50, 53. And that's not bad. We can keep that right there for now. So let's toggle close the optional adjustments layer group here. And the next layer group that we have contain all of the different paint layers in our image. Now let's toggle that open. And we have the first layer on top is the paint splashes. So if I zoom out a little bit here, we have all these wonderful sort of paint little splashes around the subject of the image. Uh, you can control their strength by adjusting the opacity of this layer. We can bring it back quite a bit. Or if you like them, we can make them a little bit stronger pop them out like that. And if any of the splashes are covering your subject's face, now on this particular image, there aren't many, but there is one up here in his hair. We'll click on the layer mask to make it active. And then if you hit the B button for the brush tool, and then D for the default colors, and then X to exchange them. We want a black brush basically. So that will exchange it to a black brush and then simply paint over your subject to remove any splashes that you do not want covering your subject. And that's how you can adjust that right there. Now next we have the sketch lines layer and that by default is set at about 35% opacity just to give some detail to the image here. If you would like, you can increase the opacity to strengthen those sketch lines 
and you can see how that affects the image. You can see more of those little outlines around the detail areas. So we can bring that back, maybe bring it down to about 30%. Uh, or you can toggle the visibility right off if you are not fond of those right there. So I like the effect. I'm going to turn it back on. And then next we have a, a layer group called watercolor paint. Now this group here contains all of the different paint layers that make up this effect. And there's a number of different ones. And basically we've done it in this way so that there's some transition between the different layers to give some overlapping of the brush effect of the watercolor. So what you can do here is you can choose a specific one. And if you find that you want a little bit lighter in the middle area here, we can reduce the opacity. If you find that you want to adjust this layer down here, which covers, you can see from the layer mask, it's affecting the outer area of the subject. You can reduce the opacity there and see how that affects it. So by doing this, you can control some of the lightness and darkness of the individual paint layers, or toggle this layer group closed, and you can control the overall opacity of all the paint layers. So if you want to have like a softer watercolor effect here. Let's zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Uh, we can go down to maybe 60. Just gives it a softer, sort of less contrasty look for that. Uh, I like it around 85, so you can do that. Or if you really want it super vibrant, crank it up to 100, and there we have a darker one. That actually looks pretty good with this image. We'll go back to 85 though. And next we have something here called the base paint layers. And what I've done with this is I've, you can see there's sort of a black uh, blob of paint here and around here um, that's been faded out a little bit. And with watercolors, this looks really nice if we have these sort of base paint layers underneath the color. So I have two base paint layers, base paint two and base paint one, and both of them have a color adjustment layer right above them. So this color adjustment layer will control the colors of the base paint layer one. This color adjustment layer will control the colors of the base paint layer two. And what we've done is behind the color area of this is a base paint of white. And it just helps the color to pop a little more when you have that underneath. And also we have a base paint of black underneath here. And if you can see, I will increase the opacity and it gives a sort of a different effect around the outside of the image. So if you like these sort of darker splotches around, which are common with digital watercolors, uh, you can adjust how that looks. And I've added the color adjustment layers in case you want to choose. You can double click this color swatch and you can choose the color of these darker areas. So right now it's black, but let's say we wanted to go with like a dark blue, we can do that here. Now it's difficult to tell at this point. Let's go a little brighter so you can see how whatever color swatch I pick here, that's affecting the color of these base paint layers. So we'll leave it at black for now. And the reason it's not showing as full black and it's showing as gray is because the layer opacity is down to 38%. If I crank it right up to 100, you'll see black right there. So let's go down back to about 30%. And same thing with the white base paint layer. It's not very obvious right now. You can kind of see it underneath the, the shirt area here. But if I was to adjust the color, let's go with red for demonstration here. You can see where those uh, are being affected. So what I'll do is I'll go back to white and I'll show you why we have this once we adjust the paper color if, uh, if that's to your liking as well. So we'll close up the base paint layers here and we'll move down to the final one, which is the canvas background. So if I toggle that open, we have a noise layer, which just gives the canvas a little bit of texture. Let's see if we can see when I toggle the visibility uh, on or off, you can see how that noise just gives the paper a little bit of texture. And again, you can control that with the visibility or with the opacity to control the strength of that. The old texture doesn't show so much on white, but we'll see in a moment here, if I change the canvas color from white to something else, you'll see sort of this old parchment style uh, texture to the paper. So let's do that now. I'll double click on the white swatch and let's just make it sort of a faded uh, beige tone here. And if I really go with a color, uh, a darker color, you'll see the that sort of old parchment style texture. 
start to appear there. That's this kind of blotchy areas in the texture. Now this is a little dark for a, uh, a parchment style paper. So let's back off of that a little bit. And we can go with maybe something a little bit lighter, something like this here. And we'll click OK. That's how you can adjust the background canvas as well. And again, if that old style texture, those blotchiness is a, a little bit too strong for you, click on that layer, bring the opacity down a little bit further, and that'll mute the effect a little bit more, make it blend in more nicely with this image. And that is basically all of the controls we have uh, for this watercolor image. I hope you really like this effect. One of the fun things to do afterwards is you can add a text layer on top Let's uh, add some text here, position it. And this is one of the reasons why you might want to use the manual selection so that you have some empty area if you wanted to add anything further to the image. So I really hope you enjoy this effect and have lots of fun playing with it. Again, I designed it to be a one-click effect, but there are a lot of optional customizations you can do with that as well. So have fun, experiment, and thanks again for choosing Artist Reactions by Photography BB. Happy Photoshopping.